Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for what is it, Tuesday, December the 18th? My name is Eric Wilkinson, and some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, I'm here to teach you some different strategies you can then Im implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. Also, remember the past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having that out of the way, let's get it on because we have a lot to go over. Uh, my portfolio in general. Let's talk about across the pond. Not a whole lot to see over there other than, you know, we're really seeing this G20 uh, meeting, everybody trying to figure out what they're going to do with oil output. If they start pulling back on uh oil output, I don't know if it's really going to cause that much of a dent right now to really get this back up into the 70s and 80s for sure. We're talking about crude oil here. I think that these guys um, are not really going to come to any type of real uh, consensus. Right now though, it's good to have lower oil prices as it helps out the broader markets for the most part, uh, other than maybe Russia and Saudi Arabia. The rest of uh, the global economies will benefit from lower prices as it will keep inflation in check. All right, so, and then here in the United States, we got building permits and they came in at 1.33 million building permits pulled. Now, we always talk about, you can pull as many permits as you want. It really comes down to the brass tacks as to if you start building. So that is the key we're looking for here. And with housing starts, they did build uh, that came in at 1.26 million units, expected to be 1.23 million units. So this looks like, you know, these, these builders are pretty confident if they continue to build and keep pulling more permits. But yesterday we saw this building permits, the National Association, or not building permits, sorry, the National Association of Home Builders Index started to wane a little bit. It was still above 50, which is expansion or a positive outlook coming in at 56, but it was much lower than expected at, uh, at 61, which is a little bit bizarre when we start to see these uh, building permits and housing starts beating the estimates. So it's a little bit bizarre there. And then tomorrow we get crude oil inventory. So we probably weren't going to see a whole lot of support in crude uh, until we start seeing what those data points are unless we all of a sudden hear Saudi Arabia and uh, Russia came to an agreement. All right, gold futures, trying to uh, push higher earlier this morning. To, we're starting to lose a little bit of ground. We're still above the 50 Fibonacci, which is uh, very important for the gold bugs. I think, again, we're going to continue to roll over and see these uh, points of control settle down the market. Not really happening in the equities. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Bonds doing just that. Thing of note, we have the FOMC meeting coming up and right now Fed fund futures are pricing in about a 70% probability of a 25 basis point increase. That means going from 2.25 uh, in the overnight rate to a 2.50 overnight rate. And it's about a 70% probability that keeps dwindling as the overall equities are starting to fall. Having said that, going forward to next year, there isn't really any probability whatsoever of a rate increase as of right now. So all of those things can change, obviously. But one thing we used to say on the floor was, you know, within two weeks of the uh, meeting, the Fed funds were about 85 to 90% correct on the predictability of an interest rate hike or ease for that matter, a cut. So right now it looks like a pretty sure thing. If it was up in the 80s, I would say it was a first sure thing. But as we're seeing this kind of, these probabilities dwindle away, uh, it's starting to look like maybe the market believes it has gotten through to the Fed to uh, keep interest rates in check where we are. All right. So, what we'll, I mean, obviously you have to see what goes on tomorrow, but uh, a lot of people are clamoring that the Fed should pause. All right. VIX coming off just slightly today, but still up in the 20s. I'd love to see this stay up there. And then let's talk about the overall equities because I got a lot to go over when we talk about my uh, trading account. 
The Dow Jones Industrial Average up about 200 points, really an inside day. The market hasn't moved whatsoever. Uh, and the only way that this market really is, I can't see a candle making a difference on a chart pattern today, uh, to be quite honest. Earlier today, I thought if we really got a drop down, maybe say to uh, this Fibonacci level and, um, and rallied back to kind of get an engulfing pattern, I don't see that as happening right now. Uh, it seems like this is just going to be one of those pause days. <clears throat> and remember yesterday, or the last couple of weeks, I said we start breaking this here. I was going to look to get out. You know, I mean, yes, this could end up being Twizzer bottoms at the bottom of the uh, range here, but I am not going to wait around. The market can be irrational longer than any of us can be solvent, I think, in that my assumption is this is overdone to the downside, but I'm not going to play around with it when it started breaking this pattern. We still have, or continuing with this pattern, actually breaking my assumption uh, with the lower lows and lower highs is a very bearish trend that I'm not going to fight anymore. Uh, yes, we did settle above the value area here, inside the value area, but it just, the way the market's been acting towards the end of the day, is just not giving me a whole lot of confidence. It doesn't feel like people are coming in to find value and scooping up these markets. It seems like they are waiting to the end of the day to just sell at the market and get out, which is not a very good sign for uh, a bullish assumption. And again, showing up in the E-mini S&Ps, you can see we are positive on the day, but yesterday went down, tested the Fibonacci extension that I have here. We did That did act as support, but like I said, that could be tweezer bottoms. I have the time to wait and be right. I decided to pull the ripcord as soon as the pattern started breaking down. And again, as you can see with the E-mini S&Ps, uh, yesterday's sell-off happened almost immediately after me getting off of this. Just a late day sell-off. No, almost no attempt to uh, stop this slide. It was just everybody and their brother getting in there and selling. So... That took a nice bounce, but I don't think we're out of the woods yet. So let's talk about what I've done with my overall portfolio. And basically what I did yesterday, and it was very reminiscent of a story that I had on the floor of the Board of Trade one time. This guy um, on the floor had a position on. It was against him. Um, he thought he was right, but you know the market kept pushing against him and continued to go against him. Well, uh, it became so bad, he came from uh, a legacy type family where his dad was actually a uh, clearing firm owner and he worked through the clearing firm. So what would happen was if you had a bad position on and you were basically a, uh, maxed out on margin, you had to flatten your position despite the fact that you thought you might be right. You either closed your position or added more money to your account to cover those trades. If you didn't have the money to cover those trades, you had to get out no matter what. And the story goes where this guy was in the pit trying to figure out what he should do. His dad came down into the pit and goes, did you get out of this position? He was like, dad, look at it. I can't get out of this position. The spread, the dot, the dot, the dot, and starts trying to explain his story to his dad. And his dad goes, give me that. I'll show you how you get out of this. Jan, boom, 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 boom. Fab, boom, 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 boom. March, boom, 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 and just completely flattened him out to the market, didn't try and squeeze anything, just pulled the ripcord on everything. You're out, now you have a clean uh, brain, if you will, or a, uh, you're, you're not tied to your position for your market assumption anymore. So that being said, that's kind of the thought process I was going through yesterday. I don't like what's happening, I don't like my portfolio. I'm pulling the ripcord on just about everything. And I try to pull it on everything, but one thing we'll talk about that I didn't get off. All right. So Netflix off the bat here. If you guys remember, I had on the January was short the 23360 strangle in there. I originally sold it for $3.96, bought it back for $6.30. You're going to get a theme here. This is not working out very well. I was almost full long uh, bullish. Maybe I capitulated, maybe I didn't. I don't care if it was capitulation or not. The fact of the matter was, uh, it broke my pattern. That's where I decided it was time to pull the ripcord. So I'm out of Netflix, UPS. I had on the January, was short the 100 puts in there. 
I originally sold it for $1.47, bought it back for $5.25. Puke-a-rama, right? Um, and then Tesla was one that I wasn't going to cover, but it just happened to be in my portfolio. So I completely flattened it. Wasn't even looking, you guys. I was basically point and clicking, can't uh, get out of all trades. So if you remember in Tesla, I had it on the January that expired on uh, 2020. Uh, I put this on last February, so quite some time ago. Sold the 150 puts, was really low volatility as you can see back here in February. This is when I, right about when I did it. So the market was up here, put on some puts, and lo and behold, the market went my direction. But now we've got this move higher. But because volatility was increasing throughout that time, Later decay didn't really hurt me because I was in such long duration, right? But the volatility moving higher helped out this position. So I actually got out of this at a worse level than I got in to Tesla, but it still was able to make money because of the scenario I set it up in with really low implied volatility. The volatility expanded, helped me out. Directionally, completely wrong uh, at the end here. You know, it was a much better position, but right now I'm talking about getting in and getting out comparing apples to apples, almost at the same levels, maybe even got out higher uh, with these puts, uh, the price trading higher than where I got in and was able to make money because of this volatility coefficient. And in uh, Tesla, like I said, I was long the 150 puts. I originally paid $11.80. I got out for $14.20. So I'm out of Tesla, out of uh, Morgan Stanley, I had on the January short the 40 puts, sold those for 43 cents, bought them back for a dollar and a uh, dollar and one cent yesterday. GE, uh, GE, if you guys remember, I put on this trade thinking what well, could go wrong at eight dollars, um, but I'm leveling out my portfolio, so I got out of the DEES, sold the eight puts in there for 60 cents, bought them back for 88 cents. And then in Caterpillar, Caterpillar, I had on the January, was short the 110 puts in there. Uh, originally sold them for $1.89, bought them back for $1.62. So made money on those, uh, but not a whole lot to see there. And finally was the eBay trade. And with eBay, um, eBay, I got a lot to go over here. Now, if you remember way back here, I put this on as an earnings trade and I had sold the 36 puts in there. Uh, I can't remember exactly what I sold those for, probably about 40 cents or something. Um, and then I got assigned on those because the market, the uh, earnings didn't come out very good. The forward guidance wasn't very good. So I got put those straight. So I got immediately mechanical with that and sold the August 36 calls in there for 33 cents. Well, I rolled those 36 calls down to the September 35 calls, collected another 40 cents. Then I rolled those September 35 calls out to the October 35 calls for another 68 cents. Then I roll again to the November 34 calls for 66 cents. And then I decided, you know what? I don't want to go too much further that I lowered my basis quite a bit there at that point by about a dollar or 70, let's say. So I decided to go in and try and do a little dollar cost averaging heading into the next earnings. So I went in and sold the November, oh, sorry, I rolled one more time to the November 34 calls for 66 cents. Then I rolled to the November 26 puts for, or got out of those, sorry, uh, November calls, got into the November 26 puts for uh, 70 cents, bought those back for five. Then I did another one where I did the uh, the November 27 puts and I sold those for 39 cents, bought them back for nine. So an extra 30 cents uh, being mechanical. All of this is lowering the basis that I originally paid $36 for eBay, right? I continue to lower it by doing the calls uh, and the puts around that. And then I finally did the DEES sold the 30 puts, or sorry, sold the 30 puts, yes, for, sorry, that's not the 30 foot, 
puts. So sorry, the D's 27 puts. And I originally sold those for 30 cents, bought them back yesterday for five. So actually, I am still long eBay at $36, but I've lowered my overall basis on that trade by around $4. So I am synthetically long eBay at $32, right? If I collect $4 in credits on all these options, it means I paid $4 less for the eBay, all right? Because that money I got to keep. And that's about it, all right? I know it was a lot to go over. The only thing I'm still long is the eBay, and I might still get out of that today. It was just uh, at towards the end of the day, point and click, and that one was one that didn't get put in correctly because I was long the uh, uh, underlying and trying to get out of those short puts. It did not recognize that as a trade, and I didn't realize it until it was too late. So um, check out Friday's, or sorry, Thursday's webinar. It's going to be on the poor man's covered call. So if you believe that this market has uh, experienced the bottom or you're kind of still under my market assumption where we're going to kind of rise a little bit, but then settle down around the point of control at some point, oh, I was thinking it was going to be a little bit earlier, then this will be a great strategy to implement in and around that. Plus, we're going to be able to show you how to isolate this volatility so that it is not going to affect you, somewhat like we did with Tesla. Literally, where I entered the trade and Tesla bought some puts, I exited the trade uh, with those same puts at a higher level and was able to make money. That's how we stay mechanical. Kind of like what we did with eBay. It's not my most um, successful management story, but you can see how staying mechanical in and around that type of trade allowed me to stay in it and uh, lower my overall basis on it. I probably continue to do that because I wasn't able to get out of it. And um, check out protraderstrategies.com. Find out more about Thursday's webinar. And if you can't take that, take it easy.